Hey everybody, welcome back to the Chaotic Little Book Corner. My name is Acacia. Today what we're going to be doing <clears throat> is going to be a two-part video. The first part is going to be movies that are, or books that have been adapted into films and when I thought of them compared. And then the second part is going to be, and this is loosely based on a tag that I was tagged in, I didn't want to make this a tag video. I just really wanted to talk about it instead of turning it into a question thing. I didn't really want to answer any questions. I just wanted to talk about them. <coughs> Excuse me. And then the second part of this, which is going to be a separate video, is going to be books I wish were movies and movies I wish were books. And in terms of movies I wish were books, if you have recommendations, tell me, please. Oh my gosh. I just... <sighs> please. Okay. So let's start with our books that have been turned into movies and compare. So we're going to start with Virgin Suicides. Virgin Suicides. All right. So the book, I have my copy, original copy, and it's completely destroyed. And I got this little modern, Picador modern classic one for Christmas, which I've shown you. This is the Virgin Suicides. This is the... I don't think you care what edition this is. It's just the Virgin Suicides. I watched the film first because I'm a huge fan of Sofia Coppola. And I loved it. It totally swept me away. It gave me all the feels. And I fell in love with it. And then I followed up with the book. I wish I'd done it the other way around. Just because when you read the book, you understand why the beauty of the dreamlike state of the film is so important. And regardless of the fact that you understand it's a great film and that the dreamlike quality of the girls is so clear in the film, when you read it, you understand that the girls were almost on a different playing field to these boys that are telling you about these girls. And let me give you a quick synopsis for those of you who haven't read it. And I'm not going to tell you all of it. It's kind of hard to... We're going to... Okay, I'll do it this way. Um, the Virgin Suicides takes place from the perspective <clears throat> of a group of young boys living across the street from a group of young girls who are growing up in a more religious household and they're being raised by... Um, the, their mother, Mrs. Lisbon. Um, so the Lisbon sisters is who this is about. And uh, things start to go awry for the family as a family. And it does have uh, trigger warnings and conversations of suicide, clearly, and mental illness. But it's, it's such a beautiful adaptation. And look at... Look at the world. And... It really kind of hones in on that teenage angst, but not in a YA trope kind of way. More of the somebody seeing it from the outside kind of way. It's, it's truly one of the most beautiful books and films I've ever encountered. So I highly recommend this pair, this duo. Start with the book, move on to the film. If you've already seen the film, read the book. If you've already read the book, see the film. Feels like this is empty. It's not. We're okay. So there's that. Now we're going to move on to Girl Interrupted. All right. Girl Interrupted. It's hard for me to compare these because Girl Interrupted is written in diary form. Girl Interrupted, the film, has diary entry comments but it's not a diary entry format. So you're not just seeing it from the perspective of the main character, Susanna. You're also seeing it from other parts or other, you're seeing it as an outsider looking in. Um, this one is so very clearly Susanna's opinions and thoughts and it's so heartbreaking. And I actually have to admit, I liked the character of Susanna better in the book than I did the film. And I felt a lot more love and affection for her in the book than I did the film. The other thing was Angelina Jolie's character plays a sociopath. And there's this uh, 
glamorization of her being a sociopath in the film that I didn't get in the book. And it it really made me sad to see the mental illness community glorified versus just spoken about seriously. Um, it's a heart-wrenching, heartbreaking, and really good entryway into looking at that world, but it... <sighs> When you have two A-list celebrities in a mental hospital, it's bound to look cool. And it shouldn't look cool. Um, mental illness is not a cool thing. It's not a fad. It's not a trend. It's none of that. And, and this book is so much more important and so much more meaningful and so much more needed to be read than the film is needed to be watched. The film is great, it's entertaining, it's good, but if you pick one or the other, please pick up the book. The book is important, it's wonderful, and it's extremely honest. It's a very honest perspective. So there's that. Now we move into Water for Elephants. All right, one of my all-time favorite books is Water for Elephants, and I have not read this in a few years, so bear with me. Um, okay, nowhere am I finding names of any of the characters, which is going to drive me a little bit crazy, but I haven't seen the movie. And I don't want to see the movie. I own the movie, but I don't want to see it because I loved the book so much. And I am so... I just, just, no, I would throw this, but I don't really want to throw my own items. Um, I loved this so much. And I was so in love with the characters and the romance and the feeling behind it, and the ideas, and I'm sorry, I really wanted to watch the film because it had Reese Witherspoon, but then it had Robert Pattinson, and Twilight's not my friend, the films or the books, so I kind of got biased and I didn't watch it, even though I bought it the day it came out. I, I don't know what's wrong with me, but that's my honest thing, is this one I loved too much to see a film of it. That's what it comes down to. The romance, the story, the writing, everything in it is phenomenal. And there's a reason that it was so well done. And I picked it up when it was supposed to become a film. And then I read it and I was like, nope, can never see the movie. Just don't want to. But then I bought it because it had Reese Witherspoon. And I have a thing where I'm totally in love with Reese Witherspoon. And it's cool. All right. Stephen King's Carrie. I don't own any of the adaptations. If you find any of them, the 1970s version with Carrie Spacey is the only version worth watching. The rest of them are so not the book. If you want to just watch a scary movie and you watch Carrie, fine. Go for it. But please understand, the book is not the movie that came out last year. It is not. And the mother is so creepy and so terrifying in the book. I hate her in the book. In the movie, I'm like, meh. She's kind of creepy and a little scary and she does some weird crap. But like, the conversation she has with Carrie about her dirty pillows in the book and how much she berates and bullies and destroys her own child is so so much better done in the book and the 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 silence that Carrie has is so much better done in the book and the mean girls who are nasty no matter how you twist it are better in the book as far as how evil they are in in the new version they just they they're so mean girl there's no depth there's no reason there's no rhyme it and there's this element of Carrie's weird, so it's okay for us to torment her. And yes, the the main mean girl does get punished because she's no longer allowed to go to prom. But... 1970s or not at all. Please trust me on this. Okay. Next. This baby. Shutter Island. Leonardo DiCaprio, 
Oh, sorry. Leonardo DiCaprio, amazing film, one of my all-time favorites. I will watch this 110 times and I will not question it. Book? Same thing. I will read this 110 times. I will not question it. I can't tell you what the differences are because I don't want to give anything away. But oh my god, if you like thrillers, if you liked Gone Girl, if you liked um, The Boy Who Could See Demons, if you like anything with a good, solid mind screwery, you need Shutter Island in your life. Film or book. I vouch for both. If you watch this, you're going to want to read it. If you read it, you're going to want to watch it. it. It's just, it's a win-win. You need it. Get it. Okay. Shop Girl. Okay, so here's the thing with Shop Girl. Steve Martin did a beautiful job, and I believe he directed and starred in this, and then he wrote the novel. I, I could be wrong. Production of Steve Martin. Where's the director? Nope. Can't find the director. Okay. Both of these are heart-wrenching in very different ways. The shop girl of the movie it definitely tries to be a little more funny and a little more Steve Martin asks. There's a little bit more of a Steve Martin's in this film, so we need to make it kind of giggly. Um, but actually, Steve Martin's character in the book, I don't like him. He's a jerk. <laughs> Like, plain out, he's a jerk. And it's very clear that he's a wealthy gentleman who believes he can get whatever he wants. And Claire Dane's character, who I believe her name... Mirabelle. Yep, Mirabelle. It's such a sweetie, but she's just so naive and so in search of love that she'll accept anything. And... It's just, it's a really heartbreaking story about what loneliness and loss and love can do to you. Um, I recommend the book and the film, but I personally actually, I hate to say this, I liked the film a little bit more. Um, but I didn't. It, it's weird. Um, I loved both of them for very, very different reasons. I loved Shop Girl as a book because I really related to Mirabelle as a character in the book more so than I did in the film. But the cinematography in this film is so breathtaking and so amazing. And the characters are so loving and hateable. Like, you really love to hate them, but you don't. Like, Mirabelle is the only... No. No, I'm sorry. Jeremy. Jeremy, Jason Schwartzman, only character in the entire movie that at all points, I love him. He's just such a dweeb, and it's so perfect, and I love him. But anyway, side note is, it's a great film and book duo, um, but it's very unspoken about, and I really enjoy both of them for very different reasons. Both of them are worth a watch and a read. Pick them up. You won't regret them. The only thing I can say is that I honestly can't compare these two anything. If you have anything similar to these and you've read them or seen it, please let me know because I'm constantly looking for things like that, especially the cinematography of Shop Girl, which is gorgeous. All right, next is True Blood. All right, so I grabbed my True Blood season one and book one because here's the facts, okay? Once you hit season two, the books go out the window. They're done. They don't exist. They're, it's not even irrelevant. Just ignore the fact that like, there's characters that don't exist. There's people that don't exist. The, 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 yeah. No. Stupid. Don't do that. All right. <laughs> so the books of True Blood, in terms of being the Sookie Stackhouse novels, very different from being True Blood. It's cool. Um... The book really talks about racism without talking about racism, which is the whole idea of the vampires in the South being hated by the people that are living and breathing. Flat out, there is a total underlying conversation about racism. There is a total underlying conversation about what religion can do to you and how screwed up it can be and how much it torments you. HBO took it and turned it into a porno. all I got. All right. 
it's fun to watch. I myself did enjoy it. I binge watched the whole thing and it's great. And I own seasons one, two, and three. But the books were way better. There's no comparison. Um, the TV show is pure entertainment and that's it. Nothing else. It's just entertainment. Don't think of it at all like the book because if you do, you're going to destroy the book for yourself. You're going to destroy it. The Princess Bride. All right, so this holds a very special place in my heart. This was my flu movie of choice as a child. This and Willow, which I have downstairs, which I love. If you have any fantasy books like Willow, please poke them my direction. If you haven't heard of Willow, I'll bring that up in the next movie, but that's fine. I just, I love this love story. Like, I love this love story. It's my favorite love story of all time. And I guess if you were gonna ask me what ship I'd ship, like, Buttercup and Wesley is, like, the ultimate ship. Like, come on, guys. Just, I love them both. I do. I really love them both. But I think this was actually, I really need a new copy of this because I believe this is the abridged version. Or if it's not, it's just, there's some pages missing and I don't know. It, it's not right and I need to pick up a new copy. So this one's super old and kind of dying so I, I need a new copy. But mm, just love, love, love. love. But the fact of the matter is that um, Wesley and Buttercup in general, I mean the relationship is about the same. The story plot line is pretty similar. Um, it's just a matter of whether you prefer to read fantasy or see it. I personally prefer to see it if I could find a book series that read like a movie Oh man, it'd be over for me in the world of fantasy. Just done. All right, so here's two movies, which is Dark Knight and Batman, both of which involve the Joker. I have a mild Joker obsession, and I don't know why. I love the Batman series in general, just because there's so much more psychology behind all of the evil villains than there is in a lot of the other films, which is kind of... That's not what I meant to say. <laughs> There's so much more psychology behind the Batman series than there is behind a lot of the other series. And um, it's just such more of a hero complex idea to me. And, and I really don't... Batman's Batman, but like Two-Face and uh, the ultimate like screwed up domestic relationship of um, the Joker and Harley Quinn. They just fascinate me. Um... Personally, I started reading Joker comic graphic novels because I was so in love with The Dark Knight with Heath Ledger and I enjoyed Batman from uh, Tim Burton. But the fact of the matter is I have not yet found a Batman series with the Joker the way that I now have him in my head. Heath Ledger kind of put himself in the Joker position and then that was it. Like, now Joker is Heath Ledger to me, and I can't switch it, and that's really hard for me. Um, so I've been trying to find other Joker move, um, graphic novels that I enjoy, but it just, it hasn't happened yet. So I did like this one. It was nice. It's just, I don't know. It was my first graphic novel. Maybe I need to reread it now that I've started reading graphic novels a little more, but it just didn't do it for me. But this is phenomenal. This is cute, but this is phenomenal if you're into comics and stuff like that. Honestly, even if you're not into comics, it's just a good adventure thriller kind of thing. All right, now we're going to just quickly mention these two because you can't have a video about books with that turn into movies without these two. Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter. Here's what I'm going to say about it. Can't compare it. Sorry. Don't know how. Don't want to. Don't want to get into that conversation because here's the thing. My sister and I are weirdos. And when I was younger, my sister did not want to watch the Harry Potter films, but she loved the books. Now, we had this claim game where we were really brats and she would be like, I claim the book so you can't read it. And I'd be like, fine, I claim the movie so you can't watch it. And that's what we did with Harry Potter. So I claimed the movies and she claimed the books. And I actually started in the Harry Potter world with the films. Um, but I didn't really enjoy them at the time. And then I got back into them when I started my insomnia. When my insomnia got really bad about six months ago, um, what I started doing was I started binge watching Harry Potter at night. And so I'd watch Harry Potter all night long. 
And then the next morning I'd wake up and I'd grab one of the books and I'd read that the whole day. While I was at work, I would read it on my break or I would read it in the car or something to that extent. And I just started binge reading. Um, and I loved both of them in so many different ways and separate worlds. Um, Luna Lovegood became a very strong connection to me and Hermione Granger I fell in love with. I began to listen to Witch Please yesterday, the podcast, and I'm now obsessed with it. If anyone knows any book podcasts, please tell me. Um, so that's my thing on Harry Potter. It's a very new to me but dear to me and it holds a great place in my heart and my first Harry Potter book I ever received I received from my grandmother who has now since passed and she bought it for me the year it came out and I did read it then and it was the first Harry Potter book and I love the first one I've read that one multiple times because it was my copy so I could claim it um but the rest of them it took me a while to get to so and then the Fellowship of the Ring, the Two Towers and the Return of the Kings Lord of the Rings trilogy loved adored um, the books, I struggle with fantasy. I really struggle with fantasy. And as a result, the books just didn't happen for me the way that I would have want, wanted them to. And I need to try again now that I'm starting to try fantasy. But at this point in time, I'm such a fan of the movies that I'm, I'm a little worried it's going to be kind of hard for me to do. Um, but I have tried several times, so I don't know. We'll see. So there you go. That's part number uno, uno. That's part number one of my films versus um, books. So this was me comparing films to books. Next is going to be films I want to be books and books I want to be films. So let's jump into that very soon. I will see you guys in the next video and I hope you all enjoy, enjoyed Mercedes three year anniversary live podcast or live cast. I thought it was wonderful. Um, Kelly and Brittany. Oh my gosh, like Elizabeth, you guys hold such a dear place in my heart. And I was so excited to see all of you. I'll link their channels down below. And Kitty, I was so excited to find you in your fantasy reader. So now I can pick your brain. So excited. I have so many channels to now binge watch. I just talked so fast. It was ridiculous. All right, guys, I hope you guys join and subscribe to my chaotic little book corner. Subscribe below, like if you like, hate if you don't. It's all good. I hope to talk to you guys down in the comments, get some conversation flowing. If you have a difference of opinion, let me know. Um, and if you have any recommendations, comment, please. All right, guys, I'm done rambling. Bye.